Hello and welcome everybody. Janet Beckers here from Romance Your Tribe Radio and I'm so happy uh, to be able to introduce you to my gorgeous, gorgeous friend, Amy Salbeck. G'day, Amy. Hi, Janet. How are you? I'm really, really good. Um, now, the reason why I invited Amy, apart from she is such just such a delightful person to spend any time with. So we've actually, before we can even hit record today, we've been yakking for an hour. <laughs> is she has just got such an amazing wealth of experience when it comes to building your business. So what, um, you know, the reason I've invited Amy is this is a woman who has used her marketing prowess to market countries. Yes, we will talk about that, how to market a country, and to marketing huge restaurant chains, to marketing it's yoga studios to building up a brand online and marketing that so when it comes to talking about marketing who better than somebody that has been able to apply and to see results across such what would seem to be totally unrelated circumstances so as always we're going to attempt to give you the best value with actionable content in about 20 minutes, which means that we're going to cut through the kind of things that a lot of times people may spend time on with a podcast, um, which is going to be that sort of lovely, you know, lovely get to know you, all of those sorts of, you know, I used to live in a rolled up newspaper in the middle of a road type thing. We're going to go straight in to actually giving you actionable content. But so you can get to know a little bit about Amy, um, the way that I'm going to be able to get the most um, insights into Amy is to ask you, Amy, um, who is it that you help and how do you do that? Well, I am a um, brand strategist and lifestylist and I help entrepreneurs get clear, connected and committed to their brand vision um, and move forward with a plan and direction. Um, and the way that I do it is by combining kind of life strategies with brand strategies to make sure that you're building the right path for you. Yeah. Well, and that's, um, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because that's exactly how you help people. But the thing that makes you so unique in my eyes is that's an incredible wealth of experience that you have, that you have brought into what you do now with people. So let's spend just a couple of minutes talking about what makes Amy so uniquely positioned to be talking about branding. So if you wouldn't mind sharing in the nutshell, you know, how, where you, those things that I introduced at the beginning about how you've gone from those huge, huge, you know, big picture marketing down to the more very specific personal branding. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting. I started out, like you said, at this very kind of global level zoom zoomed out um, where we would kind of do market research on a whole entire country from top to bottom. And we would interview and profile all of the country's kind of, you know, CEOs and ministers and top business leaders in the country um, to see how we can position that country for, you know, to promote that country for foreign investment. What is unique about this country? So it was really the question you just asked me um, is what I was doing for um, countries and, and governments. Um, and then, you know, my career has bounced around a little bit, but at the root of it all, I have always been in marketing and communication strategy and brand strategy. And so I think that whether you're doing it for countries or whether you're doing it for personal brands, um, there are so many similarities that overlap. Um, the methodology might be a little bit different. You know, like I'm not talking with countries about, you know, how to style them for photo shoots and things like that. But we're talking about the same images and which images to use to present the country and, you know, which, um, which kind of projects within the country to highlight and put forward as, you know, how could it really, how could that country really be positioned? Do you want to be positioned as a service based, um, you know, a financial services place, like a 
Singapore with you know great English language skills and great education, or do you want to be positioned as more of an industrial place like you know South China, for example? Um, so and and all those things are the same kinds of things you talk about whether you're you know you're doing a, a yoga studio or a, a restaurant group or a personal brand. And the interesting thing, so from I love how you just so quickly then were able to relate that to personal branding. I just I could really relate to those exa- those those two examples that you gave about um, you know service based. Um, industrial based. Now, the thing that's when you, when you talk when we talk about you know Amy's then gone to you know build a yoga studio and gone to um, you know maybe doing the, the the director of you know the marketing for a restaurant chain that you're a co-owner. Now, you've obviously you've got an American accent, so people are going to assume that these businesses are going to be in America, but they're not, are they? <laughs> no, they're not. I, I, I just wanted to complicate my life as much as possible. So I decided to uh, do this in Kenya, actually. And what actually ended up happening was I was working for, a, you know, I was working on a project with the Kenyan government and landed there and fell in love, of course, and um, had to pivot pretty quickly. So yeah, so these businesses are actually in Africa, which adds, you know, a lot of cultural nuances to marketing as well. Um, And I I think that's very relevant if you're doing an online business. And there's so many great um, PR gaffes and um, PR moments where people have not considered that we now live in a very global world and we cater to a lot of different kinds of nationalities who do not necessarily share our same religious beliefs and our shared holidays and our shared seasons even you know we're posting stuff about winter when it's summer in you know australia and so how do we deal with with things like that becomes you know an interesting question in marketing as well and i've i've seen people do it extremely well and i've seen i've seen people um make some pretty interesting mistakes on that front (laughs) yeah yeah and you know i think um well, a lot of times it can also come to educating your market as well because when it comes to, for example, the the restaurants, the restaurant brands that you are responsible for with the marketing, we were talking about, you know, the kind of things that you required to be able to educate people on as well. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Yeah, well, when you're in a market like you know, like Africa, and you are, and we're in Kenya specifically, and you are introducing, for example, a ceviche tapas bar is one of our brands, and it's called Tapas. I mean, first of all, just the concept of Latin, right? Even in Australia, you know, California, Latin restaurants and Latin concepts are a dime a dozen. But over there, you know, there's a real education process. And the product changes, you know, as well. So how can we make sure that we're still tapas, we're doing the concept, but we're also taking into consideration people's, um, people's cultural tastes. Um, do people even like raw fish, you know, like, and can we have a meat ceviche? Like, you know, Kenyans are meat eaters. They have something called Noma Choma. And so how do we make sure that there's enough on the menu to, you know, also, you know, satisfy and cater to, you know, their likes and their preferences and to make it understandable and clear. And I think that the number one rule of, you know, building a strong brand is to make sure people know what the heck you are talking about at all times and make it, you know, simple and easy to digest. um, And, you know, very, very clear that you're not overly doing a concept because people might not know what chorizo is. You know, how do you explain that? Chorizo is a sausage. So, you know, maybe on the menu we call it spicy sausage instead of chorizo. Yeah. Um, so honoring the concept and what you're trying to do, but also watching out for the nuances of, um, you know, culture and who your audience is and how you can really make it as easy as possible to make a selection for them. Yeah, and you know what? That comes really. I mean, this this is actually some things that I've been really noticing 
um, about my own messaging in the last couple of weeks because at the time I was recording this, I'm going through, you know, the whole rebrand and about to launch our new brand. And so I've been putting all new languaging together on our websites in webinars and things I've been creating. And it's made me realize that things that I thought I was really good at keeping the language simple, but then I've used some language like attract a client. I thought that would have been pretty straightforward. But then I had a couple of people because I've been, you know, surveying, running things by people who are a wide cross section and they've gone, what do you mean by attract? And hmm, that's, that's interesting. Simple, yeah, simple things. Or, you know, talking about your avatar and then people go, on, what is an avatar? Um, so things, even simple, tiny nuances when it doesn't have to be that you're in a completely different country with such obvious cultural differences. Those cultural differences can simply be a matter of the language that you get used to using if you're talking about marketing in a specific way, and but you're talking to people who might be marketing in a different way. And whatever your particular industry that you are, my dear listeners, <laughs> are, are in, is be super aware about some of the language you might just be using normally because it's what you do when you're helping the people who you help. Yeah, are there are there actually minor sort of um, cultural differences there where you're you're totally losing the message and you don't even realize it? Well, right, and you know not only that, catering to every stage in business. So to say that I'm a brand strategist, and I'll I'll tell you what, even to businesses that are very very far along, there's a lot of successful businesses out there that do not know the the um um. Do, they're doing brand strategy without really knowing that it's brand strategy. And so to say, oh, I'm a brand strategist. Well, what does brand strategy accomplish? What does that actually do? You know, there's a lot that you have to unpack for people in order to tell you that, you know. And so for me, brand strategy is a matter of this is unpacking your business. It's unpacking your messaging. It's how you copyright. It's the tone that you take with your customers. It's the relationship that you have to them. Who are you going to be to that person? Are you a hero figure? Are you a mentor figure? Are you their best friend? Are you a guide? Are you a um, passionate reporter? Is that what you, you used to well, position yeah. yourself? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Are you just an oracle? Are you an information giver? Are you, you know, that kind of thing is is all branding, but to say, oh, I'm a brand strategist is just not enough. Well, what does brand strategy do for me? How can it help me? How can it guide me? How can it make my business more successful? That's what people are interested right. in knowing. And that is really what, um, you know, strong brands say clearly and concisely, this is what I very obviously do for you. And if you have a complicated product, you don't need to go into all the features. You know, it's called feature dumping or feature loading. You don't need to go into all the features of your product. You just need to, in one succinct sentence, say how that can help your customer who yeah. is about to buy something from you. So you've given some, just in that short time there, so that's some really fantastic gold nuggets. So what I'd like to do now is let's have a look for people who are listening. I'm, I'm really into action. And so I know is Amy. In fact, you had a beautiful, um, a beautiful quote that you were telling me before around action. Um, well, around action, I, I say, and I don't know if it's a quote or not, it could be one. <laughs> um, I, I say, I say the antidote to anxiety is action for me, for myself, as that's the yeah. way it works. Um, and, and then there's other nuances around, you know, the antidote to, to anxiety being action, because I, I feel like when, you know, we're able to plan stuff and take action automatically, you know, what does it reduce? It reduces anxiety. It reduces overwhelm. It reduces all those things that throw us on track, off track mindset wise, right? Yeah. Um, and then when you commit to a project, and I think this is where the, the quote um, 
that I was, was talking about before. And there's, there's two different ones. The, the first one is there is so much liberation in commitment. So when you commit yourself to a project or commit yourself to taking action, you know, it's actually this liberating feeling that happens instead of this um, oppressive feeling. Sometimes we expect commitment to make us feel trapped. Um, But usually the opposite happens when we do commit to something. Yeah. Um, But the second one was a quote that I was reminded of recently in someone, a friend of mine posted on Facebook, which was Jack Canfield quote that said, um, 99% um, percent is a bitch. A hundred percent is a breeze. That is such a great, I just love it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to put these below in the blog post. If you're listening to this here on iTunes or wherever you listen to, come over to the website because I'll put all of these quotes in some, you know, in some good graphics actually so that you can go and take them um, and use them. And it's, I was, the reason I wanted to bring up about the action is because now we're going to have a look at that some of that action to do with that branding, those, some of those gold nuggets that you gave because, and actually those, when you were talking about, you know, really um, it's about freeing you up because I have found when it came to making some of these decisions, some of these things that we were just talking about, and applying it to your brand and then going, you know what, 100% I am owning this voice. I am owning this is how I help people. It just, it just frees you up so much. So let's have a look now at those things that you were talking about, you know, about what your voice is and how are you actually saying things that, People, it's putting the terms so that people can see, well, what does a brand strategist mean for me? So now let's look at some action steps that people who are listening can take this week, things that you can do right now so that you can go, you know what, I'm clear, I'm committed. I am 100% going in and this is what I do. This is how I help people. So let's look at what some people can do, action steps to apply what you've been, what you've just shared. Well, I think, I mean, just leading off that first one that we were talking about with the relationship, I would, you know, I always say, close your eyes and visualize. Visualize your customer and visualize you, the two of you in an interaction together. And what does that interaction look like? Um, So, you know, are you holding this person's hand? Are you sitting across a table from them? Are you, you know, sitting right next to them? Are your feet up on a couch or a coffee table and you're just having like a, a BFF style chat with them? Um, and that is a great place to start the visualization because it really like, it literally sets up the spatial relationship between the two of you. And that's very telling to how you see yourself in the relationship. And then go on to really, really deep dive and describe the relationship from there. Um, you know, what kind of, how is your customer interacting with you? How are you interacting with your customer? Are you the one giving the advice or are you listening to your customer and are you holding a space for them and letting them, you know, vent their frustrations? And are you saying, I understand, I can totally relate, da, 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 da. Or are you just saying, okay, hang on a minute, just hang on. And here's what you need to do. Like stop your whinging and whining and just do this, you know, and, and it's really telling in how you interact with your customers and how you're going to set your tone and your personality up because mm. those exercises are, you know, just going layer by layer into that relationship and what it looks like um, can tell you a lot. It tells you everything about the tone and personality right there that you're going to have, right? Mm. Um, it tells you about, um, you know, how the interaction is going to go, what the tone of voice is going to be. It, it basically doing that one little simple exercise where you start with what that looks like. And I mean, I'm talking about a full page of just the relationship. When they have this problem, I'm going to do this. And when they have that problem, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to respond in a, you know, kind but firm way, or I'm going to respond in a super sympathetic way, or I'm going to respond in a more authoritative way and just say, look, 
you know, get your shit together and get this done. Yeah. Or are you going to say like, I totally understand, you know, so it's just, it's all, it's all of that. And I would say, start by, by really writing down, close your eyes and visualize it and then write it down, get it on on paper. And pretty much, you know, there's so many exploratory questions. I have a, a 50 page brand exploration sheet for this, but that is the kernel of it all right there. Um, and then I would go to your website, like, you know, click on your website and look above the fold of the homepage of your website and, and just read it. And is it once, is it more than one sentence? Number one with a, maybe a, you know, um, an additive sentence underneath. And does it say what you do for your customer above that fold? Can they figure it out in five seconds or less? Excellent. Um, and then I would also, I have a, another exercise where I do um, functional benefits and emotional benefits, which is a common branding exercise. But mm -hmm. the difference between functional, emotion, functional benefits are, um, for example, in a restaurant group, you know, we feed people. We serve food to people. Right. Um, but an emotional benefit would be we create moments, right? People come to the restaurants with their friends and they have a couple cocktails and they have this nice shared meal, then they have a nice shared experience and they listen to good music and they, um, and they have this experience that is very emotional that keeps them coming back. And so whether or not the food is excellent, they might still come to the restaurant um, just based on the amazing memories that they've created there and amazing ambiance and a shared experience. Yes. Um, and I would look at what your customers have said about you for this language. I've named products before based on client testimonials. Um, Love and and understanding what my customers have said about, um, you know, a certain benefit of my service, whether it's, you know, fitness or um, food or whatever it is. Um, and I think that is a super, super useful exercise. And then you start to communicate using those benefits, focusing more on the emotional benefits than the functional benefits. Yeah. And I love that idea of actually naming the product based on the language that was used when people gave a testimonial. I mean, that's um, really, really powerful. It's actually just as a very simple example in this last uh, week is I've um, one of my products, which is a tool that I've always called the Impact Ease Quadrant or the Impact Ease Tool. Um, but I put it out to my market and, and talk to the people who you know, have used this particular tool and renamed it from, you know, the chaos to clarity tool. Yes. That's what they were saying is, you know, it actually just gives me clarity when everything was seemed so chaotic before. Much, you know, I've always called it impact ease, you know, because they're right. the variable, they're the two columns that you have. Um, and so that's, you know, that was, a, that's, a, you know, so the challenge to people here is number one, do those exercises that I love that you've done that, you know, visualize, you know, are your feet up or how are you talking? And the, the next thing then comes to, and this is where I find, I bet you too have, Amy, is once people go, well, you know, it's the example that you gave where you're saying to people, you know, look, look, this is what you've got to do, you know, toughen up princess or whatever it is, then they will quite often apologize for their style going, you know, I've really got to tone it down. Or I'm really, really supportive, you know, but I've got to, I've got to stop being so supportive and, and giving, you know, I've got to be tougher, is just own it, baby. And in fact, do it more. Like if you're, if you are the sort of the whip cracking, um, tough persona, like really ham it up because that's your brand. And it's so funny because I've heard people say, and people need different things at different times, right? Like, you know, I was in a stage last year where I wanted like a very nurturing, intimate environment, but I have been in other stages of my life where I'm just like, 
just crack the whip and tell me what to do and I'll do it. Yes. You know? And so you will really, you don't have to be afraid of being, you know, any one of those things. Um, as long as, again, going back to the commitment aspect, as long as you kind of commit to it. When your vo yeah. voice sounds to start wishy-washy and you don't know who you want to be, that is where things get muddy and confusing and you get confused and your audience get confused and they're getting a different version of you every single time and that's when it all starts to fall apart. Yeah. I love it. You know, that's that's a really nice circle back, Amy. So I think that's a, probably a good place. I mean, obviously, we could keep on talking for hours because we already have for an <laughs> hour and a half. Um, but I think that's a really nice way for us to be able to finish today's podcast is that, you know, totally owning it because, you know, if you're 99% in, if you're not really committed, it's hard work. But if you are 100% totally committed to this is our voice this is what we do this is what it's like to work with us and this is how it makes you feel when you talked about those emotional benefits those emotional right. features that's where it becomes so much easier for you um, so to for people to be able to you know get some more of Amy how do people get into Amy's world well, I'm on Instagram at Amy Selbach, S E L B as in boy, A C H dot com. And um, my website is Amy Selbach dot com. And then if you'd like a free one hour brand story planner, um, you would just go under the free resources tab there. So it's Amy Selbach dot com forward slash free dash resources. Excellent. That's fantastic. And for everybody that's listening, you know, we've given, you know, Amy's given some really simple but very, very powerful action steps that you can be doing this week. So my challenge to you is to set aside 60 minutes this week and I want you to do these exercises that Amy has talked about specifically around getting clear on what is the voice of your brand and going and looking at your website and being super clear on that. And one of the best things that you can do for Amy and also for myself is to give us some feedback. So if you do that exercise and take some action, go over to Amy's website and let her know. Um, on this podcast, if you come over to the podcast, uh, to the website, if you come over to the post where you, can, where you can get this and you can see the transcript and all things there to make it helpful for you, leave a comment for Amy and let her know that you took action because... You know, as Amy said right at the very beginning, you know, that action is one of the best solutions for anxiety when it comes around building your business. And so it's incredibly rewarding for us to get that feedback that you've taken action as well. So thank you so much for your time, Amy. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. And, um, yeah, we'll, um, thank you so much. And we will um, can't wait to see what kind of feedback people are giving and what kind of results people get just from our 20 minutes today. Bye. Bye-bye.